Chances are if you're watching this video, you've just started old school RuneScape and need a bit of help. Almost any and every problem you may face as a new player, such as what quest should I do, or how do I make money, will be covered in this video. We'll even be starting with the absolute basics and help you work your way up to some long term goals. Before I get started, here's a list of timestamps on screen to each section. If you'd like to skip to a specific part of the guide, just go to the timestamp listed below. Also, this guide is mostly tailored to free-to-play users, however I will discuss membership and a few members features later on. Lastly, I will be doing most of this guide using the mobile app, however I will also mention how to do the same thing on desktop and laptop computers. Old School RuneScape is an online free-to-play MMORPG set in a medieval fantasy world. In this world you will gain levels, complete quests, and slay monsters to progress your character and obtain gold. In RuneScape, it's hard to ever be bored because there's simply so much to do. Before you get playing, you do need to create an account on the RuneScape website. If you haven't done so already, I'd highly suggest doing that now or after you finish watching this guide. Where I am should probably look familiar if you've already created an account. This is Tutorial Island. Here you will learn all the basics of old school RuneScape. If you need help completing Tutorial Island, I will link a video on screen now to a full walkthrough of how to do it. However, if you haven't attempted it yet, I'd highly suggest just doing it on your own because it's fairly easy. Diving into RuneScape, there is a lot to do once you're off Tutorial Island. Where I'm currently standing is a town called Lumbridge. This is where you will spawn after you leave Tutorial Island and where you will respawn if you die. On Tutorial Island, you were shown the banking system. The banking system will also be covered in detail in Section 3. Although it's a little difficult to find at first, there is a bank available on top of Lumbridge Castle. This bank will be extremely convenient for your first few hours of playing, and chances are you'll end up using it over the next few years every time you die. The dust system will also be covered in Section 3. So now you're probably wondering what should I do next? I'm going to toss up the timestamps again, so if you'd like, you can skip to whatever you're most interested in. If you're confident you know how to operate the game client, you can just skip past Section 2, but I'd highly suggest watching it. On mobile, simply tap wherever you'd like to go. If you can't see where you want to go or plan on traveling a long distance, tap or click using your minimap. To turn the camera, simply take your finger, press it on the screen, and drag. On desktop, you can use the arrow keys or the middle mouse button. Next is the chat box in your top left or in the bottom left on desktop. First look for the name of your character. If you tap on it or next to it, the keyboard will be pulled up and you'll be able to chat. If you're on desktop, you can just start typing and press enter when you're finished. Once you press enter, you will be speaking in public chat. Above this chat box, you'll notice a lot of buttons that you can turn on and off. Each is fairly self-explanatory, but if they don't all make sense yet, they will later as this guide goes on. Before continuing, I would highly suggest switching your private chat to friends. This makes it so only people you add to your friends list are able to message you and will prevent you from receiving spam messages. Up next is the buttons you see to your left and to your right, or on desktop all on the right hand side. First up is your stats tab, also known as your skills menu. Here displays all the different types of skills available for you to train. If you do not pay for membership, you can only train the skills highlighted now. Here in the stats tab, you can see all the levels you have gained so far, with your total level in the bottom right. This is different from your combat level, which we will discuss next. If you're on mobile, you can tap on the skill to see how many experience points you have gained in that skill so far. The experience points are also abbreviated to XP, which is what I will be calling it through most of this guide. On the desktop version, simply hover over it with your mouse cursor to display your XP. If you'd like, you can also view a skill guide by holding your finger on a skill, and pressing the View Guide button once it pops up. The Combat Options tab is the tab that will show your combat level and the attack options you can use. Your combat level is calculated using your attack, strength, defense, hit points, and prayer skill levels found in your skills tab. By switching attack styles, depending on which weapon you're using, you can choose to train attack, strength, defense, and hit points, or with some, all at the same time. If you're using a ranged weapon, you'll also be able to train ranged, and the same goes for mage. You'll also see a button called Auto Retaliate. If this is switched on, then you will automatically fight back against monsters and other players who attack you. 
If you're holding a staff and have the runes necessary to cast a spell, you can also set it up so that you will auto-cast that spell every time you enter combat. This is much more convenient than clicking the spell in the spellbook every time you want to use it. We haven't talked about the spellbook yet, but we will very soon. This is your inventory tab. Pretty much any item you pick up, take off, or get from your bank will show up here. Press and hold on the item in your inventory to display more options, or on desktop right click the item. You can hold up to 28 items at a time. If you need to save on bank space or plan on selling a lot of one item at once, you can put banknotes in your inventory. This is something we also will talk about in more detail in the banking section, which is also located in section 3. The worn equipment tab, also known as the gear tab, is where every item you put on will go. You can tap this button to display the stat bonuses each item gives you. This button allows you to check what the value of each item you have is. This button will show what you lose if you die. Lastly, the call follower button will call your pet to you if you have one. Next is the prayer tab. Prayers can be used for a multitude of different things, such as temporarily increasing your stats, keeping an extra item if you die, and so on. If you run out of prayer points, you can get them back by simply praying at an altar. This is the clan chat tab. Here you can join a clan or make your own. To talk in a clan chat, simply join it and press backslash on your keyboard before you start typing your message. Most clans you can join simply by typing in the owner's username. This is your friends list, and the red frowning face in the top right is the ignore list. If you add a friend to your friends list, that means you will be able to tap on their name and send them a message. The ignore list is for people whose messages you maybe don't want to see. If someone is saying something you dislike, simply add them to your ignore list, and if they're breaking any rules, report them as well. Ignoring someone will hide their public and clan chat messages, as well as preventing them from messaging you. In this tab, you can see how many days of membership you have left if you have purchased membership, how many bonds you have, which is something we'll also talk about in the membership section, view your in-game inbox, and change your character's name. There are also links to the old school website and customer support. This tab is a combination of four different options, however we will only be talking about two of them as this is a beginner's guide, and the other two options are mainly members features. The blue star you see on the right is to display your quests. Green means the quest is complete, yellow means you've started the quest, and red means you haven't started it at all. The second tab we will talk about is the minigames tab. Here you can look at a variety of different minigames available to you and teleport to some of them. As a free to play user, you only have access to Castle Wars, Last Man Standing, Clan Wars, and the Duel Arena. The two tabs we aren't going to talk about are Achievement Diaries and Karen Favor. Both are very useful if you have membership, but seeing as how most of you watching this guide probably don't, this is something we'll save for the membership section. This one is fairly simple. You can log out or switch to another world on this tab. Unlike other MMOs, in RuneScape you can play on any server or world and keep your progress. This is the options menu. Explore this to suit whatever your needs are for playing. For example, if you want sounds and music on or off, what controls you want, if you want private messages to show separate from the chat box, which I highly suggest turning on. There are a lot more options available than this, but there's just too many to cover now, and not all of them you'll ever even use. This tab, the emotes tab, is probably the most fun tab out of all of them. If you want your character to dance, simply go to the emotes tab and press the dance emote. You can unlock more emotes by completing holiday events, through some quests, and various other methods. The music player is fairly simple and self-explanatory. You can play music here. Other than that, there's not really too much to say. This is your magic spellbook. Here is all the different spells you will be able to cast depending on your level. Unlike other MMOs, RuneScape doesn't have any sort of mana system, so you will always have the ability to cast spells, assuming you have the runes needed to cast it in your inventory. You can also filter your spells on mobile to make the buttons much easier to press. Up in the top right hand corner is your minimap. We've already gone over how to use this and what purpose it serves, but what we haven't talked about is the globe icon attached to it. Basically, you can open this to get a bigger view of the map. Although you can't walk using this map, it is much easier to see where you're going and where you plan on going. On both the minimap and this normal map, you'll see a lot of symbols. 
These symbols are very helpful as they will help you find a lot of things such as shops, banks, and so on. If you want to know what a symbol means, simply go to the top left, click this button, and this will open the map key. This displays all the different symbols, and by pressing on one of them, it will highlight any that are nearby. Lastly for your interfaces are these various different stat orbs. The hit points orb displays your health, and it will turn green if you're poisoned. To become unpoisoned, simply drink an anti-poison. Next is your prayer orb. This displays how many prayer points you have remaining. You can also tap and hold on it, or right click it on desktop, to display your quick prayers menu. Here you can edit which prayers turn on and off when you tap the orb. This is way more convenient than navigating to the prayer tab if you're constantly turning on and off two or three prayers. Once your quick prayers are set up, tap the orb to activate them. Tap it again to turn them off. Next is your run energy. By tapping this orb, you can turn your run on and off. If you run out of run energy, don't worry because you will naturally gain it back over time. Or, if you're a member, you can use a stamina or energy potion. To lose less energy, just carry less stuff. Check your weight on the worn equipment tab. The lower it is, the less energy you'll use. If you're a member, you can also increase the amount of time your run energy lasts by training the agility skill. Lastly is your special attack orb. This orb simply shows how much special attack you have remaining. Next is probably the most important section in this video. If you only watch one section in this video, I would make sure it's this one. First and foremost, the old school RuneScape wiki is going to be your best friend when it comes to RuneScape. It can almost always identify any question you have, show you the best way to train a skill, and identify items you may be unfamiliar with. The link to the wiki is at os.rs.wiki. When getting to the wiki, let's say you want to learn the best way to train fishing. In the bar at the top, type in fishing training. On the next page, select if you're a free-to-play user or a pay-to-play user. Pay-to-play is basically just another way of saying member. The guide will then tell you what to fish, where to fish it, and how many you'll need to fish. Let's say you're having trouble completing a quest. Simply type it in at the top again, and you'll be able to find a full guide for it. You can even learn money-making methods by searching for a money-making guide. Lastly, if you want a more visual guide, YouTube is also great for this. For questing, I highly suggest Slayer Music 1, as most of his guides are all in real time, and that makes it much easier to follow. Banking is a fairly simple mechanic, but with all of its different options, it can get quite complicated. Since you probably don't need a super organized bank as a new player, I'll just go over the basics. My bank is a bit messy, but I try to keep it organized with tabs. To make a tab, simply drag an item to this plus icon. Now let's say you want to withdraw a specific amount of items from the bank. So in this example, let's just go with 12 sharks. You can either tap on the shark 12 times, or press this X near the bottom and type in 12. Now every time you click an item, it will automatically withdraw 12 of them. Same goes for putting items in the bank, it will deposit 12. This is very convenient if you need to withdraw the same amount of items over and over again. Lastly is the subject of banknotes. Let's say you want to sell 100 sharks, but you don't want to fill your inventory, sell them, go back, fill it again, and just repeat that cycle. You can simply withdraw them as notes by pressing the note button, and in this example, I've set the custom amount to 100, so we will withdraw 100 at a time. There are a couple different ways to buy and sell items across the world of RuneScape. We're going to go over the basics of a few of these options. First up is shops. Buying items from shops located across RuneScape is not very convenient, but it can sometimes lead to lower prices on items. Trading is the process of buying and selling items with another player. This is typically going to be your least used option when it comes to buying and selling items, as this is mostly just used for giving gifts or free items these days. Now what I'll do is I'll bring you through a live example of how to use the Grand Exchange. It's not very complicated, but it's still good to go over it like this. Okay, so here's now a quick little walkthrough of how to actually use the Grand Exchange. What you're going to want to do is go up here, press Exchange on the booth, and as you can see I already have a couple offers in here. The button on the left in each box is the buy button, and the button on the right is the sell button. 
So what we're gonna do this time is, let's say I wanna buy a, let's say a bronze helmet. A, let's go with the bronze full helm. So you type it in, you tap on it, and here it is. You can select the quantity if you wanna buy one or two or however many you want and what price you wanna buy it for. So we're gonna just try buying it for the price it is right now. If I wanted to potentially pay more for it and get it faster, I could press this up arrow over here and it'll go up a couple times, or I can just press this three dots and type in a custom amount. Um, let's say, here, let me put in three. Let's say I don't want that amount and I forget how much it goes for. You can press the button with the coin and the hand to put it back to its normal price. So I'm going to press confirm here and see if it buys. Luckily it did for us and it actually bought for a little bit cheaper than it would normally go for. So we get the helmet plus 15 coins. So let's say I can now wear iron helmets and I don't want this anymore. What I do is I open the grand exchange and I can either press sell or I can just tap on the helmet in my inventory. And then it's up in this menu again, which this time instead of buying it, like I said, we're selling it. So because I bought it for 15 coins, I figure it's not going to sell for 25, but let's just try to sell it for that much. So yeah, it's not selling. What you can do is you can press on it, press this X and cancel it. Then we can pop it back in there, lower the price down a little bit. Let's go. We want to undercut the market a little bit just because there's probably a lot of people selling it for 15 coins. Let's just try and sell it for seven. And it's actually still not selling. So that's a little embarrassing. Let's try and sell it for one coin. Normally I would not recommend doing this because selling everything for one coin means you're not going to get much. But in this case, mobile just came out, so I figure, wow, it's not even selling for one coin. Nobody's buying bronze full helmets for one coin, that's insane. So because of this, there seems to be not too much of a demand for it, but what we can do, however, is we can just leave it in there, wait a couple hours and see if it sells. And ultimately, if it doesn't, we can just drop it on the ground because it's not worth that much. Oh, there we go. It just sold for <laughs> one coin. So I would not recommend selling your items for one coin. But in this example, I just wanted to show you that you can lower the price if it's not selling. When you die, you lose every item that you're holding or wearing, except for your three most valuable items, as well as any untradeable items. When you die, don't worry because your stuff isn't gone forever. You have 60 minutes to get back to wherever you died and pick up all of your stuff. Now let's say you travel into RuneScape's wilderness. The mechanics change a bit and that will be discussed in detail in section 6. There are two easy ways to get out of a bad situation if you're lost. The first is simply opening your world map and figuring out where you are. The second is the Lumbridge Home Teleport. You can cast this teleport just about anywhere except for the wilderness. You can cast the home teleport every 30 minutes and it is completely free as it doesn't require runes. So now you know all the interfaces and have some basic tools to get your adventure started. What exactly should you do now? I don't really mean to sound vague, but it's really all up to you. If you're still lost on what to do, I'm going to give you a few short term goals to follow. First is the Stronghold of Security. It's an excellent place for new players to go to get some quick cash and get the best boots in the game for free to play users. The Stronghold is located in the Barbarian Village. I will discuss an easy way to get there in the next goal. It's filled with a wide variety of monsters that can be very high level. As a result, I recommend bringing some armor and a lot of food. By completing the Stronghold, you'll get the boots that I mentioned previously, as well as 10k GP. The canoe system is a great tool in old school RuneScape. It is basically the fastest form of travel besides teleporting for free to play users. It will allow you to quickly and easily get to places like the Barbarian Village, Edgeville, and Lumbridge. You need 57 woodcutting to make the best canoe, however you can start using it at just level 12. Do keep in mind that you also need some kind of axe to chop down the tree and make it into a canoe, so I'd suggest carrying one with you. Free to play doesn't have very many quests available to train, so completing all of them is not too difficult. The hardest is probably the Dragon Slayer quest. Completion of that quest allows you to wear the best free to play plate body, the Rune Plate Body. Getting every free to play level above 30 is a good goal to shoot for as it makes you familiar with all the skills you have available. Should you ever choose to get membership, it'll also be a little bit less of a shock as it allows you to do a lot more. 
Here, I will cover every skill available to free-to-play players. Let's start out with combat first. Obviously, we have to go over the basics before jumping right into the skills. Your combat level is determined by seven different skills. In this section, I will cover what exactly each skill does and how to train it. Leveling up attack allows you to hold better weapons. Attack also determines how accurate your hits will be when fighting using melee combat. Leveling up strength will allow your melee hits to hit harder. Leveling up your defense allows you to wear better armor. This includes melee, ranged, and magic armor, so don't ignore this skill even if you only plan on training ranged or magic. Defense will also make it more likely for your enemies to only hit zero damage when attacking you. Magic will increase your magic defense, meaning you'll be more likely not to be hit by magic-based attacks your enemies use. Leveling up your magic level also unlocks the ability to use more spells. Some magic weapons and armor also require a certain magic level to use them, although that's typically only in pay to play. Leveling up your range allows you to increase your range damage as well as accuracy. Some range weapons and armor also require a certain range level to use them. Leveling up your hit points increases the total number of hit points you have available, meaning you can take more damage without dying. Lastly is prayer. Leveling up your prayer gives you more prayer points and access to more prayers. Having more prayer points allows you to pray for longer without running out of them. In free to play, the best way to train prayer is sadly just burying bones, but I would highly suggest not doing this if you have membership as it is a very big waste of money. Now that you understand combat, let's actually get down to training it. In RuneScape, there are three types of combat, melee, magic, and range. There is also something called the combat triangle, which you are seeing on screen now. The way it works is, if you're fighting someone who is in melee gear, magic is going to be the most effective. If your opponent is in ranged gear, melee will be the most effective, and so on. So that's great and all, but what should you actually wear in combat? For melee, always wield the best scimitar you can. For defense, wear the best armor. You should also wear the boots you receive from the Stronghold of Security, and any cape or amulet you'd like. For ranged, always train using the best shortbow you can. For defense, start with leather armor at level 1, studded leather armor at 20, and finally green dragon hide at level 40. Magic gives you a little more variety when it comes to weapons. In RuneScape, there are items known as elemental staffs that give you unlimited casts of any rune with that element. For example, if you're holding a fire staff, you get unlimited fire runes. So depending on what spell you're casting, pick your staff accordingly. For armor, the best you can really wear is wizard robes. For levels 1 to 5, I recommend training on the chickens located in Lumbridge. Although over the next few days they will be very crowded, they'll almost never do damage to you and is extremely fast experience points. For levels 5 to 20, train on the cows right next to the chicken pen. They're also very crowded, however you can profit from them. Cow hides are worth around 140 coins on the Grand Exchange. Also, if you're scared of dying or think that you'll get hit a lot of damage, bring a tinderbox and an axe. This way you can cut down a nearby tree, light a fire, and cook the meat. You will be able to heal by eating the meat. For levels 20 to 40, your options do get a little bit more variety. I'd recommend training on the barbarians in the barbarian village, or any monster on the first level of the Stronghold of Security. If you'd like, at level 30, you can also go to the zombies on the second level, which will probably be less crowded. For levels 40 to 60, I'd recommend training on flesh crawlers, which are located on the second floor of the stronghold. They're fairly easy to defeat and actually provide some decent profit. Now that we're past the combat section, I will discuss all the non-combat skills and on screen show a few ways to train each of them. You gain woodcutting experience by chopping down trees. Woodcutting is not a very complex skill, and although it is fairly slow to level up, you can get some decent profit once you unlock yew trees. As your woodcutting level increases, you can also upgrade your axe. Fire making is the next step when it comes to woodcutting. You can burn logs you either buy or get from woodcutting to gain fire making XP. Fire making doesn't really have much of a purpose except somewhat for cooking, which we will cover soon. All you need to make a fire is a tinderbox and some logs. Use the tinderbox on the logs or the logs on the tinderbox, and now you have a fire on the ground. Fishing is another resource gathering skill. You'll simply use a net or fishing rod with bait or feathers to collect fish. 
Whether you use a net or rod depends on what you're fishing. I've listed on screen which fish uses a rod and which uses a net. Cooking is a fairly easy skill to train. You get cooking XP by obviously cooking many of the different foods across RuneScape. If you don't sell the fish from fishing, simply light a fire and start cooking. If you want to burn less of the food you cook, however, it's recommended to cook at a range. However, this is also not very convenient in a lot of cases. Mining is the skill where you collect ores that can be later used for the smithing skill. Much like fishing and woodcutting, it is also a resource gathering based skill. Mining is fairly straightforward when it comes to leveling. When you do level up, much like woodcutting, you can also upgrade your pickaxe. Smithing is the counterpart to mining. Unlike most other free to play skills, you shouldn't train smithing until you complete a quest. That quest being the Knight Sword quest. This is because it will instantly boost you from level 1 smithing all the way to 29. To train smithing after this, you can turn ores into bars at a furnace and smith those bars at an anvil, or if you have the cash just buy the ores off the Grand Exchange. To get the best XP in free to play, just make the best plate body you can for your level. Crafting is a skill used to create many of RuneScape's different jewelry as well as ranged gear. There's a lot of methods to train crafting and almost all of them are very expensive. I would not recommend training crafting as a beginner as it can become very very pricey. There are also a lot of options depending on your budget so I've linked the wiki page in the description so you can decide which method you'd like to follow. In the meantime, complete Sheep Shearer, Goblin Diplomacy, and Mistal and Mystery to get some starter crafting XP. Lastly is rune crafting, the process of creating runes. Before beginning this skill, you must complete the Rune Mysteries quest. After this, you can craft runes by obtaining a tiara or talisman based on that rune. Make sure you keep that in your inventory when crafting. An example of this is you get an air talisman to make air runes. Next, fill your inventory with rune essence, go to an altar, enter it, and click on the altar inside to craft runes. What I've noticed is a lot of RuneScape players have no account security and don't ever set up any unless they lose their items. In this section, I'll discuss how to avoid scams in the game and stop other players from hacking your account. The Wilderness is something I've mentioned quite a few times in this guide, but haven't given a full explanation of yet. In my opinion, if you're a beginner, just stay out of the Wilderness entirely, but because I know some of you will be curious, I will explain how it works. The entirety of the wilderness is a PvP area, meaning players can attack you at any time. As you go further into the wilderness, the wilderness level increases. Let's say your combat level is 10 and you're in level 5 wilderness. This means any players who are level 5 and up can attack you and any players who are level 15 and below can also attack you. If you die in the wilderness while scold, you lose every item on you. You get a skull above your head by attacking another player. You won't get it by defending yourself from another player, you will only get it if you attack them first. If you are below level 20 wilderness, you will not lose any untradeable items, however past level 20 they are converted into coins for whoever killed you to take. Also past level 20 wilderness, almost no teleports will work, however if you have an amulet of glory or combat bracelet, you can teleport out at level 30 instead. If another player kills you in the wilderness, they will be able to pick up any of the items that you drop. After about 2 minutes, those items will also become available to everyone else that may walk by them. So if you do die in the wilderness, chances are you're going to lose anything that you don't protect. The Authenticator is your main tool to help protect your account. It is also a requirement to have one set up to complete the Stronghold of Security. Basically the Authenticator makes it so every time someone tries to log into your account from a device, they have to enter a code that is sent to your phone or authentication app. You can set it up to trust your personal device for 30 days, so you don't have to enter it every time. I know it may seem annoying, but please do set this up as it will prevent the large majority of hackers from gaining access to your account. The bank pin is fairly self-explanatory. Much like real life, you can have a bank pin in RuneScape. Simply talk to a banker to set one up. Much like other MMOs, RuneScape has its fair share of scammers. They're typically found at the Grand Exchange and Duel Arena, but because Mobile has just released, they'll probably also be found in Lumbridge. There are a lot of different types of scammers, pretty much too many to explain. So basically just follow the rule, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Lastly, I'm going to discuss a few aspects of membership now. First, how do you actually become a member? 
The most common way is to simply purchase a subscription on the RuneScape website, which is currently around $11 a month, but you can get discounts by buying more than one month at a time. Second is through the use of in-game bonds. You can purchase a bond using in-game gold and get 14 days of membership. RuneScape is one of the very few games that offers the ability to purchase membership with its in-game currency. Becoming a member unlocks every skill in RuneScape, some of the most popular things being things like Slayer. Slayer is trained by fighting monsters assigned by Slayer Masters. When you get higher Slayer levels, you unlock tasks that make over half a million GP an hour. Another skill is Agility. Although not very popular due to its grindy nature, it allows you to run for much longer and gives you the ability to unlock the Graceful Outfit, more or less the most popular outfit in game due to its run energy bonuses. Not to mention, membership will also unlock way faster training methods for every free-to-play skill. Becoming a member can unlock every quest in RuneScape. Completing quests offers some amazing rewards and basically unlocks every area in RuneScape as well. Bossing is a huge part of RuneScape as a member. By becoming a member, you can unlock bosses like Zolra and Vorkath. Although both are locked behind quests, they can make an upwards of 2-3 million GP an hour. Another boss is Tiztok Jad. Upon defeating Jad, you will receive the Elusive Fire Cape, one of the best and most popular capes in the game. Some features I didn't go over earlier in the free-to-play section were Karen Favor and Achievement Diaries. Karen Favor is part of the island of Zaya. Zaya has five different houses or factions. By completing tasks for each house, you can gain favor in that house. For example, achieving 75% favor in the Hosidius house unlocks the Woodcutting Guild, or 100% favor in the Shazian house will let you color your graceful red. Achievement Diaries are all over the world of RuneScape, and Zaya will actually be receiving its own very soon. By completing Achievement Diaries, you can unlock different pieces of armor that allow you to do things like, like teleport to certain places that otherwise wouldn't have teleports, and unlock perks in that region where the diary is located. Anyway, hopefully this gave you a good idea of how RuneScape works, and gave you a few ideas for what you want to do with your account. Did you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, or join my Discord which will also be linked in the description and in the comments. This guide took a really long time to make, so a like would be greatly appreciated. Regardless, I will see you in the next one.